for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Drew. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. How are you, buddy? Doing good there, buddy. Are you, are you a Reuben fan? How's the nads doing? They're a little achy, as a matter of fact. Thank you. Mm hmm. Achy breaking nads, yeah. Nice. Uh, you talking about American Idol? Yeah. I, uh, you know, uh,. I thought uh, Clay was a pretty good singer. I thought Ruben was a pretty good singer. I, yeah. I gave Clay, it's just Clay so skinny, it see, his pipes seem more impressive yeah. than Ruben it's because of, yeah. it's like a real skinny guy singing opera is more yeah. impressive than a big fat guy well. singing opera. <laughs> so I gave, him a, I gave him a few more points for that. But uh, other than that, I don't really care who wins. Yeah. No. I think Clay's got a huge, like, he'll be on Broadway in like five minutes, seems to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who won? Ruben. Oh, Ruben yeah. won. All right. Well, good hey, times. it was you're in Los Angeles today. It was very hot. Yes, it was hot. Did that bother you? Yes, I don't like it when it's hot. I had the most strange experience. I was aware. You know, I I share my dis, disdain, my hatred for the hot. Yes. For the heat with you. You mm -hmm. and I have the same. It's the only thing we agree on. Yeah, we agree, but we agree passionately on this. Yes, it's enough to keep us together. So, something about my having been sick today, or this last couple of weeks with the hernia operations, now made the heat not bother me at all. It was the strangest experience. Like, I was aware it was super hot. No problem. Yeah. It was strange. When you had bigger fish to fry? I, I was, a, you know, it was like, I, it's like it didn't trouble me the way it normally does. Well, had you... It, I wasn't wearing a tie today. I thought, maybe that's it. Was it was because it? you were distracted, or is it just because you, you got a chance to put things in perspective, which is... I think it might be perspective. I know what pain is really yes, like. I, yes, I think okay. it's something along those lines. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna take a, a carpenter's awl and uh, put it into my left ear <laughs> good. It works. for the summer. You won't bother, he won't bother you a bit, then. It'll be 108 degrees outside, but it'll be like... It is pretty hot, but again, there's blood <laughs> shooting from my left side, so... That's what I'm talking about. I'll focus on that. Okay. All right. I was, uh, I had a thought myself today. Yeah. I was watching, uh, I don't know if what it was, Dateline last night or something, did this uh, hard-hitting interview with uh, Billy Joel uh -huh. about uh, his boozing and his mm -hmm. life and all yeah. this kind of stuff, and uh, geez, the guy sold like 75 million records or something uh -huh. ridiculous. But uh, Katie Kirk was doing this interview oh, with him. Sorry about that. That's, uh, that's, that's your phone. It's been a while since I've... Uh, Unacceptable. Yeah. It's funny, because last night we were talking about uh, turning your pager off. Yes, yes. All right. Funny. H hang up. You don't need to talk to them, Drew. Don't worry. You, you need to listen to me. I am. I got you. We're, we're, you're looking down. you got to look I'm up. turning the pager off so I can get the... Just hit the off button. That's uh, all. I'm doing it. Really? Yeah. you got to stare there at your go. belt for uh, 20 it's minutes It's like nine to steps to shut it off. Interesting. Okay. Anyway... Uh, Billy Joel. Yeah. Uh, so they keep interviewing him because uh, he's checked himself into rehab. And I always think, I, I, you know, I just start smiling when I hear these people talk because it's, uh, because it's, uh, I, I picture what you would say. Yeah. You know, when they go, well, you know, I, I, I went on a little, I went on a little binder and I got a little out of hand. So I checked myself in and now it's fine. I have a oh. couple of glasses of wine with dinner oh. and it's no, no big deal. I still have oh. the hard stuff. Wow. You know, it's that kind of talk. Yeah, yeah. And everyone just does a lot of glad handing and uh, oh, head yeah. nodding. And They're like, oh, good, like, good. Oh, that's great. Right. It's off the hard stuff. So the whole angle is, is they want to know, you've been in two car accidents in two evenings in the last few months. Uh, what's going on? Are you are you boozing again? And uh, uh, because you've wrapped your car around a couple of oak trees uh. here two times in a row with no, the guy lives out in some the Hamptons or something. There's no nobody no traffic on the road. It's not like you know, hey, it's not like a deer ran out in front of the car. Right. His thing is is uh, nope, stone cold sober, stone cold sober both times. And Christy Brinkley, his ex-wife, is trying to keep his daughter away from driving with him because wow. her thing is is. I don't want her driving with you if you're driving you're drunk because yeah. you're loaded. So Katie Couric keeps pounding away. That's like, good. Were you drunk? So you were sober. So you were sober. That's good. It's all fine. Everyone's satisfied. Well, the guy was sober. He just happened to get into two accidents yeah. in a couple no. of months that had nothing to do yeah. with any traffic no or anything like that. But here's my point. It's worse that you were sober. <laughs> you're just flying off the road now. Yeah. There's nothing we can stop you. No, with. it really it means something. It means he's on other meds. He's doing something else. I, I'm here. just saying. Let's just let's let's just take it from your strategy. You were completely sober. Now, I'm having trouble with a guy who can't keep his car on the road. 
And by the way, sober is not something you can sober up from. You're just complete. You're sober all the time. So well, now your brain daughter, damage, brain damage, or your brain damage. Yeah, this is like what I. It reminded me what we yell at our callers, oh, yeah. which is, "Are you drunk? Are you high? No, I'm are you not. Stupid? Are you? <laughs> you should be. You should be begging to be drunk or high. But no one ever pursues that. No one ever really thinks about that. And if you think about it, it's really true. Which is. Look, a guy who gets uh, loaded and wraps his car around a oak tree uh, twice a year, in my in my eyes, it's, better be loaded. He's loaded, yeah. but it doesn't make him a bad driver. Man, he was driving well, drunk. But what if you're just wrapping your car around oak trees and you're stone cold sober? Take license away. It, but it could happen at noon on yeah. Sunday now. Yeah, that's right. It's not just it's not just Saturday night. It happened right. anytime. That's right. All right. I don't know why no one extrapolates it that way. This is the number on my pager. That may mean something for you. Yeah. Right? Oh, it is something for me. Yeah. So maybe uh -oh. you ought to want to call that. All right. It seems kind of weird that I get that number, doesn't it? It does seem kind of weird. Yeah. That's my home number. Yeah. Uh-oh. Do you want to call it? Yeah, I do. I'll go call it, and I'll, make the, I'll do the phones. Okay. I may have a uh, possible emergency uh, brewing here. So, uh, Drew, you just take the first call. Let me All put right. that call in. Very good. Ooh, what's that? Hi, this is Adam. Please leave a message. All right. Here is Kathy, 19. Kathy. Yeah? Hey, what's going on? Hi. How are you? Good. Um, well, okay, I have, I've had some bad relationships with, like, every time I've had a sexual relationship with a man, it's ended bad. And, um, like, it was a one-night stand, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, now, whenever someone hits on me, I just completely choke up and don't, you know, I, I totally shut down and want to be away from the situation. Mm -hmm. So I can't ever like meet anybody because I I don't know why I just um well the, more about your history and all now you're how old now you're 19 yeah when did you lose your virginity uh 17 when you're 17 mm -hmm. and everything was going okay in that relationship uh no what I, happened with that I met the guy that night and he's in his mid-20s and I don't even know his last name it just there was just one night and then pow was over yeah, well, yeah, it was kind of over. I had a miscarriage. Woo, so there was a whole lot of stuff going on in relation to this. Yes. So, have you had sex since then? Uh, once. How'd that go? Um, it was a one-night stand, too. Is there anything about these sort of abandoning relationships, these abandoning experiences with men that would bring back something from your past? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, like, I have somewhat of a dysfunctional family, if you want to say that. Let's hear about it. What's the deal? Um, a lot of alcoholic. You okay. Um, abusive relationships. Hold on a second. Hold on. You okay? Yeah, my wife's uh, niece got a part of her finger cut off at camp or something. Oh my Went God. to do a reverse amputation. I don't what? know what that reverse amputation means. No, put it, put it back on. Oh, that's reverse amputation. Mm -hmm. I guess <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. That right, seems like a plan. Yeah. I gave. I gave my okay. You you had to have a approval or something for that? I, I don't know. She wanted to talk to you. She oh. got the Dr. Marcel, the plastic surgeon, on there. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I said he's, yeah. he's better than you anyway. Yeah. Although he's probably trying to pick her up right now. It was, it was, it was that a little problem. Tootsky? Yeah. <laughs> How about a little bump? Take the edge off. You want wow, to come that's by? Well, that's very come smart. You want to get home from to work. page me, though, right? That's good. Yeah. 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 Mixed. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so we're talking to Kathy. Kathy shuts down when she meets men. She's real closed down. She's had two sexual experiences, both one night stands. Really, no relationships, though, right, Kathy? No. And has a kind of a. She was just starting to tell me about how crazy her family is. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. Um, as al my father is like kind of a closet alcoholic, if you yeah. want to say that. Was, um, he, was he abusive with you or anything? No. But, well, my my mother can be abusive. Okay. Um. All right, so. All right, that's where I'm bored. All right, well, the deal with Kathy is she needs to go to Al-Anon or Adult Children of Alcoholics, something like that where she can do some work and look at what the impact of having had an alcoholic dad has had on her. She has any, an aversion to closeness. She mm -hmm. can't be close, and when she is close, it's sort of acted out sexually with guys that are abandoning. Mm -hmm. And she needs to break that pattern by developing a real close relationship with someone, and that's only going to happen in sort of a therapeutic yeah, Good frame. times. Now, or look, get a therapist. Look, you don't want to talk to Heather over here. You've got a threesome call over oh, here. I Heather's, Heather's going to end up the same as uh, uh, Kathy. No, no. Or whatever her name is. Misty. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there man. we go. <laughs> <laughs> See? 17. What's up, Misty? Um, I had a threesome a few, almost three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I did not really enjoy it too much. I thought it was, it was two girls and a guy. Mm -hmm. And I did it out of curiosity. And sure. 
I was just, I was just like, I was not into doing things with girls. But my friend, she must have loved it because she has been hitting on me so much. Mm. And I'm so not interested in her. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, who was the guy? Your boyfriend? Yeah. Your boyfriend of how long? Uh, three months. Three months. And the, the girl was a friend of yours, but not a good friend of yours? Mm, she's a pretty good friend. Pretty good friend. Yeah, and, is she lesbian? Uh, I didn't think so. All right. You know, this is the deal with threesome. Well, hold on. I want to get some details right, first. Right, right. Did your boyfriend get to do anything with her? Yeah. What did he get to do with her? Anything he wanted because he wanted to his birthday. Do it. It his birthday. Why not? He wanted to do it with the guy also, like a guy and a girl, but I didn't want to see him with a guy, so I said, you know what, you can do it once her, but I'm not letting you up bring a guy in this because the idea of seeing him... This is a this is a very bold strategy, because you know yeah. he probably it was a pure penis bluff. <laughs> like, uh -huh. yeah, I'd really, I'd like to teabag the guy and then do a little uh. light felching, and the girl's like, oh, <laughs> come on, no, I'll just get a chick in here, and you can do whatever you want, you whatever do, you want, just just don't. I don't know, I got a hankering for some dork. <laughs> no, no, anything you want, I mean, I anything. I think he did too right. much. I was pretty sure he, I, you know. What did he do with her? He gave her oral. That's and, it, huh? Well, he. He seemed to be <laughs> going all over her, but... <laughs> he what? You know, he was touching her all over. She's a very big boob. <laughs> mm -hmm. Misty. Yeah. You're having trouble telling us what happened. Oh, I'm sorry. She, no, she, no, he said that she, yeah, but, he went down on her. But then he was really more... Then he felt her... All, how big were her boobs? She's a double D. Double D? Yeah. How big's the rest of her? Um, She's... Five three, actually, but she's pretty thin. I'm thinner than her. Oh, wow, that's a nice, that's a hell of a combo. And he, uh, so he didn't have sex with her. No, only with me. Only with you. But he gave her oral sex. It seems it would be low on my list of threesome things to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, um, I was trying to end it early because it started just me and him. She sat down. It was kind of weird. I've never done a threesome. Uh, did you did you do anything with her? Yeah. What'd you do with her? That's what she liked. That's what she went down on me, and I went down on her. All right. Mm. It's, see, her girlfriend didn't like the guy. She liked right. her. Well, here's the deal with threesomes. First of all, you never can predict the feelings that are going to be created. It's not. It's not as people make it out to be some sort of like uh, afternoon recreation. It's like you know, going for a bike ride in the park, or we can have a threesome. It's all the same I know. Thing. I just and, and the kinds. Of, and listen. I'm so curious. All right, but listen. Right. But listen. That's fine. But there's all sorts of very heavy feelings generated from these sorts of experiences. Some of them very positive, and you get attached to people you don't want to be attached to. Yeah. Or something very negative, because you see somebody doing something that flips you out. And you've got both. Let me you got say your this girlfriend now completely second. into you, and you got your boyfriend, you're flipped out about him uh, who being cares? all over. Oh, I don't care about my boyfriend. She's she fine. doesn't care. But look, yeah. well, listen, what about this? How much curiosity can there be? I mean, you're female, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You have female genitalia. You don't have to wonder about what it's like to touch female genitalia, what it t looks like, what it feels uh, like. I, I don't know. Uh, no, it wasn't no, like that. No, just quiet. Was, Did, all right, I'm, shut up. Now listen, everybody. Women always do that. I was curious. I was curious what it was like. I was curious what it was like. Mm -hmm. Well, any woman who's had a guy go down on them it, fe knows what the sensation of a tongue on their clitoris is, right? Yeah. And the parts you have is the parts like... I'm not curious what a guy's dork feels like. I got my own dork. My hand's on it right now. Do, do you never, know what I'm saying? It never comes off. What are you talking about? Well, sometimes I scratch my ass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's my point. Yeah. How much curiosity? Like, no, you no. know what it's like to have, Drew, yeah. you know what it's like to have a female's mouth on your penis. Yeah. It, are you extra curious what it would be like to have a male's mouth on your penis? Or do you think you just know what it feels like to have a mouth on your penis? I think a mouth is a mouth. And do you need to know what your penis feels like no. when it's a, a penis feels like when no. it's erect? No. No, you feel it every morning when you're whizzing in the sink. No. I, I don't understand the curiosity part. I know it's an emotional thing it's for, an emotional, for women. It's, it's an emotional thing. And some people are novelty seekers. All right. So anyway, listen, Misty. Yeah. All right. So big deal. You got out of here unscathed. I mean, you're, you and your boyfriend are still together. Well, this... I broke up with him. Okay. You uh -huh. broke up. See? Well, she never liked him. Why'd you break up with him? Um, because he he's just a little... Um, I mean, my mom's a fortune teller. No, not a fortune teller. A care card reader. And he, Your mom? Yeah. And he kept on being like, can she read my fortune? And I don't, I don't, I don't like having... Hold on a second. 
What language is she speaking? It's supposed to be English. Is the cadence? It, it, There's you a know, lot of slurring. You know what, know what she's? Uh, you know what Misty's like? No, no, hey. <laughs> no. Misty are like these assholes who leave their number on my phone machine in the wrong cadence. Yeah. Kennedy from MTV does this. Yeah. She goes. Uh, I, I almost have to write it down to do it, but she'll go. All right, call me back at three three. Four, one. one five seven six <laughs> <Yeah>. three. <laughs> And you go, okay, that's the wrong cadence. I got no cadence now. I have to listen to it 30 times. Yes. Even though all the numbers were were said, I don't know what it is because I don't know what the cadence it's is. supposed to be three, three, four. Suck my white balls. <laughs> that's right. You, that's that's exactly right. I think I think Misty speaks in a cadence we can't understand. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right, Misty. Um, I'll try to clear myself up. We, we, don't, we don't care. You broke up with the guy. That's fine. Okay. You, uh... You don't have to have sex with this girl if you don't want to. That's fine too. But what do I say to her? Like she is she You're not into just it. Just blow her off. Okay. You just blow her. You just shine her on. You, I'm you, not you, a lesbian. It's easy. Yeah. I don't like girls. You, sh you do what you do. Like what are you doing this weekend? Uh, I'm pretty busy. You yeah, just keep walking. Great at that. They know what it means. <laughs> They're they experts. Experts. Yeah. All right. Let's talk to Mike is 17. Mike? Yeah. What's up? I was just wondering um if Adam was the voice of the Grim Reaper on a uh, Family Guy. Yes. Yes, I am. Whatever. That that was like the best episode. Thank you. Your poor mom. She's probably like that in real life, I bet. No. No? She, she's not, she doesn't talk as loud as uh, that uh -oh. woman does. No, well, I got a question. Yeah. All right, well. Let me say this quickly about the Family Guy. All right. I love that show, as you know. Yep. And here's the deal. Hollywood is full of uh, horrible scripts, and they make you do everything a thousand times. Family guy, I walked right in there, I did it, it took me 10 minutes, I went home. Wow. I don't think I ever did anything more than once, and any changes I wanted to make, they said fine. And it was probably the best voiceover huh. cartoon I've ever done. Yeah, it's on, car it's on that network now. Yeah, I love it. I love that show. And Seth MacFarlane, the guy who does it, did some cranky anchor calls with us this year, and he's just a genius. He's well, really funny. I think funny. to myself, my God, wouldn't it be marvelous if I turned out to be a homosexual? Oh my God. Same guy does that voice, does the dad. Yeah. And that's uh, that's pretty rangy for a guy. Love Stewie. All right. Well, anyway, what's up there, Mike? All right, man. My dad left my mom about 14 years ago. You mm -hmm. know, they split up, and he went to wherever he went to, and my mom moved down here to Florida with her new husband. Mm -hmm. Well, here now, I'm almost 18. He tries contacting me again, and he calls my house. Somehow he got the number here. You know, what was? what do you think he's trying to gain? He's making amends. He's in, yeah. he's in recovery. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, this may be what I was talking about the other night. He's yeah. on stage six. Eight, ten. Eight or ten of recovery, which means call everyone around them, make them feel uncomfortable. Right. When's the last time you spoke to him before this? Um, 14 years ago. Was you were so, three. You spoke to, what did you talk about? <laughs> NAFTA. <laughs> <laughs> the, the upcoming NAFTA <laughs> trade agreement. And I think the RICO Act, I think, was brought up. About that time, yeah. Um, but... What, is, was, was he an he, alcoholic? Was he an alcoholic, yeah. Uh, yeah, and he used to beat up on my mom. And yeah, he, he's probably So is he, he's calling now, he's sober, and he's apologizing, or what? No, he just says he wants to try to get back into my life again. and I. Well, there's, there's two possibilities. Either he is sober, and he's trying to reconnect with important relationships and or make amends, or he's further down the disease and he needs money, and he wants to manipulate you. Well, see, he owes my mom about 30 grand in child support that he mm -hmm. never paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But look, here's the deal, Mike. You don't sound ready for him. For him. No, I'd probably kill him. And and I think it's okay for you to say to him, you "Look, know. I appreciate what you're trying to do, and I'll give it some thought, but I'm just not ready for it right now." Right. And uh, would you would you give me a buzz in uh, a year, six months? We'll see if it's uh, any different. Yeah, my mom took it really hard. The fact that he called, or the fact that he left. The fact that he called. All right, All right. Well, on the other hand, if the guy says, hey, man, I'm sorry, I've been sober, I found Jesus Christ, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's what he said, but I'm not buying it too well. He said he said it's he's sober now? He's sober and that he goes to church and that Jesus told him to call me, and he oh. talks to Jesus all the time. Ooh, that's right. not, uh, uh, now he's, he's just a different kind of nuts. Yeah, that's not sobriety. Yeah. See, what happens is, is before you're high, and then that just gives way to nuts when you actually have the conversations with Jesus. You know, something that's on the same topic I thought was uh, interesting today is uh, Jim Fossil, the coach of the uh, New York Giants. The uh, head coach went and found his son that he gave up for adoption 35 years ago. Oh, yeah, I saw that picture, yeah. And uh, 
I thought for the son, like like you said, it was funny. This is what made me think of it. Is like when you said, look, he, he wants money. He wants something. Like normally, you got some guys like some sort of uh, hermaphrodite junkie who once had a sex change and wants to Needs borrow to some money it. to go back, oh. go back to where he was. Wants to get his penis back or right. something. But you got a guy who shows up like, yeah, I'm your dad. You're not my dad. You're the coach of the <laughs> Giants, dude. That's right. I'm your real dad. Holy yes. Yeah. Uh, can I go down on the sidelines? Like, yeah, come on down. And here's your new Giants jacket. You want to you wanna be the long snapper for the team, son? Or you, you want to kick extra points? Come on down. This is the, this is the equivalent to Rich Uncle you've discovered. You yeah. can stand on the blocking sled while uh, Strahan pushes you around the field. Like, I, that would be the – that. I'd be right. It all would be forgiven, by the way. Mm, right there. Uh, yep. Up. Oh, okay, pops. When when we start training camp, this gonna be great. <laughs> Season tickets. All right. So uh, it's gonna be kind of freaky, right? Yeah. And I wonder if the guy knew. I mean, no. I don't know if he didn't know his last name. He didn't know his. Must not have known his last name. Maybe he thought they. Maybe there was some resemblance. We, we, I don't they know. Look, where they, they didn't got, look that much. Did you see the picture? No. They don't. No. I don't know where the guy lived. What city did the guy live in? Wonder, he's a 35-year-old guy. There's a good chance he's probably a football fan. You know, mm -hmm. be curious. Not a football fan, uh, Brian says. All right, Brian, come on, keep your, keep your head still, would you? <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna speak to uh, Rick. Rick's 19. Can't come when he gets a BJ. Did once, but took 45 minutes. Wants to know why. After this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LV 191. All righty. Let's get back to the phones. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk to uh, Rick, who's on line two. He's 19 years old. Rick? What's going on? What's happening? Not much. Mm. All right. Um, when I uh, get a BJ, I don't uh, come. I have once for. Well, it took uh, like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you know why it took so long, or mm -hmm. you've only had one once. You may have one? a bad nut. How long does it take you when you masturbate? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. How long? Uh, Hold on. 15 minutes is a, a lot. Time. A lot of beating off. How about if you're having sex? How long? Uh, half hour. Half hour. Half an hour. So it's the same range. Huh. Ask me the same two questions. How long does it take to have an orgasm when you're beating off? <laughs> Fifteen minutes. How about when you're having sex? <sighs> yeah. Never. <laughs> like, is, is he dying? Do you think he's dying? Rick? Yes. What'd you do? Just uh, take a Quaalude and a fifth of Stoli? Or what's going on? I I have no idea. I don't take anything. I understand. I know. No, you get on the radio, get that surge of adrenaline. <laughs> adrenaline. You just got And you're just a little nervous, buddy. Calm down. All right. I'll... Okay. So uh, this is just the way you are. Okay. You, you're, you're nuts. Um, dance to the beat of a slower drummer. Also, they don't like the oral sex. And they don't like it, just like Drew, who's a man of exquisite passion. And uh, Rick may be a very passionate, passionate man, too, although I, I don't, it doesn't sound like that's his problem. Yeah, he doesn't have that passionate edge. He sounds a little slow. Yeah. Rick? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. What do you do for a living? I uh, work in retail. Retail. What do you sell, like tractor parts? Shoes? Uh... Pots, pots and pans, you know, pots and housewares. Man, yeah. you work at a department store? Uh, you could say that. All right. Thanks, barrel. Rick. Yeah. Very intriguing. Okay, Rick, we don't care. Uh, that's just you. That's the way you're cut out. You don't yeah. like the BJs. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, that's right. Yeah. You're fine. Kitty? Yes? You're 25? Yes. What's up? Oh, okay. Well, um... I'm a Vicodin addict, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been off of it now for, oh, God, about a month. I've been um, on methadone treatment. And my concern is my sex drive is just, like, died. Well, that's methadone. That, 
Well, you, you, you just switch from one opioid to another, and now you're on methadone, and methadone has lots of side effects, so sleepiness, dog drop and sex drive, urinary problems. So that's Are it. they using methadone more and more now for Vicodin? They're using methadone. Um, yeah, they are. There's a, are. There's a whole Thank you. school of thought that uh, harm avoidance is the way to go, that you can't treat opiate addicts, that they just re relapse, and you should is, just put it, them on a methadone and forget. Is, is an opiate an opiate? I mean, isn't it harder to get someone off heroin than it is to get them off Vicodin? Or are no, they the same? They're um, roughly actually, the same. They're roughly the well, same. So you, they, the heroin addicts tend to take more of it. But it's well, who does? Heroin addicts. Oh, okay. it, but yeah, you know, a big-time Vicodin user, or a 50 to 100 pill Vicodin a day user, will have a horrible And that's just an opiate, and that's it. And that's it. Okay. No, nothing's worse than, me than methadone, though. That's the worst to get off. Uh, all right. Well, it's not really meant to get off, is it? Nope. What? Kitty? Yeah. So, oh, my God. That's shocking. See, my concern was that I was going from one addiction to another, and that's exactly what I didn't want to do. And they're, like, really encouraging this whole... That, like, they're well, there's a school of thought that that's the way to do it, but if you're really serious about getting well and want to get into recovery, that's a different thing. You can still get off the methadone, but you got to go into a program. you got to have to spend several months really focused on this. Well, and, maybe uh, we wean her off the methadone with some Vicodin. <laughs> I, 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 have, I actually thought about doing that, but okay. I have patients do that kind of thing. Uh, Vicodin Good times. is that I was having withdrawal so hot that I was having uh, big, like PVC, I think they're called. Yeah, all right. Those won't hurt you. But be that as it may, you might want to check into a program that really comprehensively treats addiction. Yeah, listen, everybody, with the uh, with the Vicodin and the heroin and the uh, opiates, it's just uh, there's nowhere to go but down. There's just no possible and just horrible, horrible addiction and withdrawals yeah. and and, yeah. and massive pain. Just why why get started on that it's, one? It's the king of addiction. It's the worst addiction process. Kathy. Yes. You're 21. Yeah. What's up? Um, Although, how come how come speed seems to have a lower instance of of uh, being able to beat it? You know what I mean? The, the statistically, speed is like the worst thing to to get on or to get off. Why why speed? I'm not sure that's true. Uh, I just saw some documentary on it and said uh, that the uh, you know it's not the, so much the recidivism is getting them in. <laughs> Because they, they maintain it for long periods of time before they get into trouble. All right. Go ahead, Kathy. And they often okay. switch around to something else. And they, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, me and my boyfriend have this mutual friend. And we've all been, you know, discussing, you know, having a threesome or whatever. And when we get to the point where we actually do it, she, like, freezes up. She yeah. has a moment of sanity. Well, that's when you get her. <laughs> well, we're just wondering if there's a way to get her to, like... Be more relaxed. What do you mean? What do you mean freezes up? What happens? Like she just she engages in it, but then she like freezes up and then wants to stop automatically. Well, how far is she into it before she stops? Like halfway into it, like just getting. What do you mean halfway? Look, look, if somebody who freezes in, in response to a highly sort of evocative situation can be a trauma survivor. And this can be sort of a re-traumatization. It's, it's a bad idea for her to get involved yeah. in this if she's actually having a true freeze reaction. I agree with Drew. you got to juice her up. And I mean, get a little booze in her. Uh, uh, Kathy, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding this exactly. Okay. I, I don't know what getting halfway into a threesome is. And I don't know what is, freeze means. And I'm not sure what freezing up means. Is she totally naked? Okay, she's totally naked. Like, all of us are, like, completely naked. All right. We're and, getting into everything. And everybody's, in, in, like, having oral sex with each other. Yes. So that's more than halfway in. That's in. I'd say it's okay, more well, than uh, more than just your big toe in the shallow end of the threesome pool. Could be, yeah. Could. Yeah, your balls are in there, too. Mm -hmm, yeah. And you guys are uh, all getting into it, and then she says, I have to stop? She just was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to do this anymore. But then she wants to start up after we stop. So then you stop, and she wants to start up again, and it happens again. Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, you do what with her? You get a little oral sex from her? Yeah, like, I go down on her, she goes down on me, and my boyfriend does both. Well, he goes down on both of you guys? Right. Does he get any oral? Oh, yeah. All right. Both. All right, it's good. From both of you guys. Yeah. Wow. Where, where, where? I wish my ladies would uh, would have frozen up about that point, like the post-oral point. Just stopped. <laughs> Left. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough of this. I've been blowing you for the last 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, listen, Kathy, she's not into it. Okay. She's a little freaked out. Okay. 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 Uh, I mean, what do you want? 
Uh, how badly do you want her to do something she really doesn't feel like doing? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you could get her good and loaded and sort of, you know, knock her into it a little bit, but then she'd just be, she kind of resents you. I'm curious, what did you think we were going to say? I wasn't exactly Blackjack and some duct tape, maybe a little uh, elephant ether. tranquilizer, oh. ether rag. What oh. What did you think? I don't... I don't know, like, I would, I don't know. Okay. Just thinking maybe there's, like, something that we can, like. Well, uh, okay, so you wanted Drew to go, like, you got to finger bang this chick real hard. <laughs> then you got to give her, uh, give her a couple wine coolers and put some Al Green on, okay? And if you could smoke a little herb, that'd be cool, too. <laughs> Okay, but really work her hard downstairs, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, have your boyfriend uh, see flog her, okay? <laughs> How old and is she? And then you go for the anal. How old like, is she? Is that yeah. what Drew to say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's 18. Yeah, come on. All right, you're 21. You got this kid. What are you hanging? And by the way, 21 and 18 doesn't sound like that big a deal, and it's not that big a deal if the, like some 18-year-old chick's dating a 21-year-old dude, but... You're a 21-year-old. You got your uh, scuzzy boyfriend. And uh, what do you hang around with her for? Um, just because I do. What, uh, what's your boyfriend Well, do? now I understand. Why didn't she just say that in the first place? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he just does whatever. He doesn't really do anything. He doesn't work? Not in his situation, no. What is his situation? He, a and give us a, a specific answer. He's an inmate. He's an inmate. Mm -hmm. How does he get to have threesomes when he's in the joint? This is before he went in there. Oh. Well, when's he getting out? 88 days. Okay. Well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Yeah, I mean, you're just pure white trash? No. What do you mean? Part white trash. Mostly white Come trash. Come on. There's what's, nothing wrong with me. What's going on with you? You guys don't have any kids, do you? <gasps> no. Oh, huh? Phew. No. What happened? You gave one away? No, we had a miscarriage, okay? No. Good. Good. Oh. It's the best thing that could have happened to you and to society. What? Not really. Yeah. Yes. You, you got a boyfriend who's in the joint right now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway, do Kathy, you, do don't, don't have any kids for a while, would you? And leave this 18-year-old. No, I, I know what he's in. Yeah, parole, parole violation. Yeah. That's why he's in, right? Right. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, my God. He was just born on a parole. There's never a primary crime. No. Never original crime. Certain percentage There's of original the, sin. That's what that's what I'm parole for. Most people who call this show uh, were born into parole. That, that's thus the concept original sin. That's Where right. Where do you think that comes from? That's right. They're just guilty at uh, birth. Yeah. Keep trying for those kids. Uh, this poor eighteen year old with these scuzzy white trash. All uh, right. Megan? Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> You know, close your eyes and picture this couple. They're probably doing it on some uh, chewed-up water bed with a bunch of dog hair on it, like uh, one of those uh, stretched-out 7-Eleven uh, seven, seven up bottles with, like, a dead rose in it somewhere in the corner and a little Leonard Skinner playing on the Toad and Play. And it's not that she's not so... <laughs> toad and Play. It's, it's not that she's not into the... Not into the threesome. It's kind of like she's probably sobering up and looking around and going, this guy smells. Mm. All right. All right, Megan, 18, what's up? Yeah, I'm, I've been with my boyfriend for about seven months now, and, you know, we're pretty serious, but I can't help but have this curiosity about sleeping with somebody else. Is this the first guy you've ever slept with? No, he's the second. Mm -hmm. Is he your first boyfriend? No. All right. Well, I, you're, you're not... You're not done. Two choices. Yeah. Either you're screwed up or you're not in love with him. You're just not that into him. Yeah, you're sort of... You're 18, you've been with a guy for a few months, and you're thinking about being with other people, you're That's not fine. into him. That's fine. It's okay to be want to be with other guys. You're 18, it's a, but you're supposed to date other guys. But you're, you just, you're not into him. It's not that you're so much into other guys. The other guys is well, she just... May, she may be aversive to closeness or something. You know, we yeah. talked last night about how 18, 20-year-olds sometimes sort of naturally don't want to get too close. It's sort of protective. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're, we're in love. Yeah. I love him. Oh, I'm convinced now. <laughs> no, I, I love him, but... No, you don't. I do understand what you're saying, because 
every relationship that I've been in has been kind of serious. Never really had fun. All right. What? what I, I Next know. caller! What goes on? What's going on tonight? People are sort of, uh, are, they, are, are they playing like, a, are playing a Game Boy and talking through a tube sock into a bad phone on the roof of their house? So they're sort of half interested in the call. They're sort of, they're losing interest in yeah. their own question. Like they're building something while they're talking. Yeah, to there's them. a ship and a bottle yeah. that's being built in front of them. They're like, yeah, no, right. we're in love. <sighs> they're just sort of coasting to a stop. Like, what's your question? Hold on, I'm not done with this, Megan. <laughs> Listen, what happened to you? Somebody molest you? Did you hang up? Smartest thing he ever did. Oh, see, she got some health. Yes, she's <laughs> so. got some dignity. She hung up on my nappy-headed ass. Okay, listen, I don't want to talk to anyone's on a Quaalude who just polished off uh, a fun-sized uh, tub of NyQuil <laughs> and uh, who's uh, w watching the uh, TiVoed uh, American, American Idol. Idol. Yeah. I, it just it, who has no interest in their own question. And, and by the way... N not even any questions, really. I got this girl. She has a threesome, but then she kind of she blows half my boyfriend's uh, inmate dork, and then he gets she gets bored. And, uh, okay, huh? right, real questions, real questions. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. All right. Let's get it going, Drew. What do you All say, right. buddy? All right. Get some good calls. Hop back the phone. Speak to uh, Daniel. Oh, there's a good, 24. good phone yeah. line right away. It's great. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Um, I have a question or it's kind of like a, a statement at the same time. Uh, I was wondering what you guys, is. A, what's a good tip for you guys to give on a nice uh, fine dining experience with wine, dessert, the bills eighty five, ninety, maybe one hundred fifty dollars. What is your guys' uh, tip on those um, on those dinner experience there? What percentage? What? Yeah, yeah, especially if it, if it was good, bad. No, I, you 20, know, twenty percent. They usually about twenty percent. Yeah. Okay. I, I I here's what I do. He's got a bad line. I will tip more. If I go in and have uh, eight bucks worth of eggs, yeah. I'll leave them five bucks yeah. just because uh, who the hell wants to get uh, yeah. twenty percent of uh, eight? You know, yeah. buck sixty. Yeah. That's no good. So I'll, I'll do that. But on the other hand, I'm not into. You know what? I, I'm not into the big thing. The big tips. Here's what I'm saying. You got some waiter at a nice. You go to a nice restaurant and you go there with a group of five or six people, yeah. you run the tab up to like uh, six, seven hundred bucks. Yep. The waiter's been waiting on you guys for about an hour and a half, and they also have three or four, uh, three or four more other tables. Mm -hmm. You got to drop, uh, you got to drop, bucks. you got to drop like a uh, hundred change or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, nah, they don't need to make three hundred bucks an hour. Yeah. Like they're not attorneys. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I know I sound like uh, old man Corolla here, but the whole here's the way I look at it, and this is what makes me a prick. And the whole time I swung a hammer, I made fifteen bucks an hour. Yeah. I was reading plans, I knew all the codes, I was framing houses, and you know, I was yeah. a skilled. I drove a truck with two thousand dollars worth of tools on it. Yeah. You're some uh, half a fag uh, actor who's in town uh, with a little dippity do in his hair. You're twenty two years old. You need to average eighty bucks an hour. No, no, you don't. You're just schlepping food. You don't have anything. You know, it didn't take you, didn't take you 15 years to do this. No apprentice school, no undergrad work, no nothing. I mean, I'm fine with you making a living, but you, you don't have to get rich. You don't have to make more than a guy who has a skill, by any stretch of the imagination. Plus, you're getting phone numbers the whole time, and then hanging out here, eating for free, mm. getting phone numbers, and hanging out and getting drunk with the bartenders uh, after you clean up. Now, I have I have no sympathy for these people. I'm actually jealous of them. And what else, Drew? We good? Dominique. All right. Dominique? 21. Yeah, hi. How are you doing? Good. I just want to tell you guys first off, I love listening to you guys. Thank you. And... Oh, wait a minute. I know what I wanted to say. Oh, no. Here we go. I don't like any of those jobs where the people go, uh... Well, the management, you know, you they survive off the tip, so you got to pay them. Yeah. It's like, look, you go into a nice place, the steak's thirty two fifty. Oh, you you want the Brocca flour, too? That's another 8 bucks. Eh? Can't pay the guy who's bringing it to me? I, I got to pay him? Yeah. Like, well, 
Yeah, but they, they don't pay him. These guys don't get paid. I, what a great scam. Yeah. I, I would love to run a business that went this way. Yeah. I, I don't pay my employees, so you pay me. You pay me. Then you got to pay them, too, because I, I don't really pay them. Uh, this, they wouldn't be able to survive off it. Really? I just dropped 700 bucks at your sushi dump. You know, you know, maybe take some of that money and pay them. This is all the money they get. Yeah, because you don't pay them. Shouldn't they pay them? Yep, absolutely. All right. I also don't like the fact that uh, you can go to the IHOP or the Denny's and park for free for as long as you want, but you go over to Nobu and it's four bucks, and you got some Nicaraguan guy shaking you down on the curb. <laughs> Nothing worse. Uh, geez, I don't have any cash on me. What you got in the ashtray, man? Oh. It's like, uh, uh, it's, let me fish some quarters out of it. I, I, got, I got like 275 here. It's all I got in change. Uh, yeah, that's not going to do it. It's like, uh, we just spent 1200 bucks in the restaurant. Yeah, we're not affiliated. You're not affiliated? You're standing out front parking people's cars. You're going into the restaurant. I wish the restaurant would just pay for those people. Of course. All right. I, I get that. Right. Don't, don't get me going, Drew. Don't get me started, Dominique. <laughs> yeah, we don't pay them, so you're going to have to pay them. I totally agree. Yeah, that, oh, that Sprite? That's $9. <laughs> uh, you understand we don't pay them. <laughs> really? Okay. It's a great scam. We all buy into it. I know. You know, your wife's always sitting there going, oh, we, you're just going to leave 20 You know, that's all the money they get. I know, because no one pays them. we got to pay. What do you want to Should we pay for the car insurance, too? What else do we need to pay for for these guys? All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, I had a question about um, postpartum depression, or I guess just depression in general. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I was a teenage mother. I'm 21 going on 22. I have a six-year-old son, mm -hmm. and I am in the minority because I finished school. I'm getting my BS in two months. Right. And I did go to community college for two years, and it was good. But then I transferred to UCSB, and it was much better. <laughs> you have you have a six-year-old? Yes. Wow. All right, great. Yeah. All right. He's going to be seven in December. But um, I guess... Hold on. December's too far away for you to be <laughs> talking December about when he's going to be seven. That's kid talk. Well, it's just... He's six and a half. I guess when people have kids, you know... Yes, yes, you talk that way. You're, listen, he's, you're talking... He's, he's going to be months. seven in nine and a half yeah. months. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's closer to six. He's, he's closer to five than he is to seven, you know. He's, his birthday is December 1st, so he's six and a half next month. When, when my, my he's kid, 178 weeks old. My kid's birthday is in November, and I, start, when moms I started that. talking about them as being the next age in around August. How old is your kid? He's 4,028 and a half weeks old. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I never know how old that is. He's 27 weeks. <laughs> uh, He's in high school. Well, he's in high school, right, for sure? <laughs> Dominic? So what's the question? Okay, so um, I'm not sure if it's like postpartum depression from when my son was born. or Postpartum, is within, the first, postpartum yeah. is within the first year of delivery. Okay, because, um, and then I also, I have a blood disorder. It's called sickle beta thalassemia. Yeah, she was sickle trait. Um, well, see, my mother has the thalassemia trait. Yeah. My father has a sickle trait, right. and I so got like you're, a combination you're, Yeah, it's called, it's called sickle thal. So. Yeah. Sickle what do you got to be? A, you got someone, is this everyone got to be black, or someone's got to be black? Well, what do you my, get? Dad, my dad is Puerto That's Rican and Medi black, and my mom is Puerto Rican. Oh, my God. The hurdles you've had to overcome. <laughs> Shocking. And, okay, so... So one's Puerto I Rican think, and black, and the other part's uh, Puerto Rican? Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out the part that got her to finish college. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna look into this. I gotta get my I gotta get my racial uh, color wheel out <laughs> and figure out what's going on with you. All right. Okay, so what's so the question? I uh, I am depressed. I guess or have anxiety attacks. I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. And do you have I'm a, not sure if. Do you have a drug history? No. Are you on any medication? Um, just the pain meds I take for my pain crisis. And I don't take those. Pain crisis? They're sickle needed. crisis. Oh, I see. How often are the, 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 the sickle crisis? Uh, maybe about twice a month. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that stuff could be working against you. Plus, God knows the chronic illness can, can affect you, too. Oh, well, why don't you uh, do something on campus? 
I mean, like support yeah. group? No, I mean, yeah, go, go talk to treatment. a counselor. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You should have, I mean, most, many people with sickle disease get uh, tr some sort of antidepressant treatment. So what's common. sickle mean, really? Sickle cell disease. I know, but what, what's the sickle part come in? The bl red blood cycles form sickles. They're blood sickles? sickles? They're blood sickles. <laughs> They're sickle shaped. They're just half moon shaped. And, and they, get, they get clogged in the capillaries and cause a lot of pain, the restriction Why of Why don't only black people get sickle cell? Because in the many, many years of evolution, it turned out that people with sickle don't get malaria. And malaria is endemic in Africa, and so the people with the sickle traits survived better. Uh-huh. So the, the many, over many Generation. thousands of years and yeah. generations, the people who did not have the sickle cell... Died of malaria. Died of malaria in yeah. Africa. Yeah. So now it's just become, you'd have to, have to come from Africa. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I never knew that. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, hey, hey. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Just finishing my rant with Drew about uh, how I hate waiters and waitresses and... Uh, uh, they don't have to average 180 bucks an hour. That's something stuck to your head, too. Yeah, that's my brain, buddy. You aware of that? Get used to it. Oh, I got a post-it stuck to my head. That's nice. I mean, when I'm thinking, <laughs> you put a I trap on your paper head. like a magnet. <laughs> All right, so I was yapping about that. Uh, the parking? Yeah, you know, I hate the parking. Mm. I hate the valet. The more expensive, the more ex the restaurant, the more expensive the valet. The other thing that drives me nuts, as I was saying, is. They don't pay waiters and waitresses, so it's up to us to pay for them. Yeah. So you just drop uh, 170 bucks for you and the old lady to have a nice dinner, and now it's, you got to pay for the guy, too. Ugh. The one that drives me the most nuts on that, uh, and there's a handful of these jobs, it's diabolical. They don't, they don't pay. The employer does not play, pay the employee, so we have to. Uh -huh. It's the, uh, the massage, uh -huh. the masseuse. Yeah. I don't get them, but uh, my wife and all her cronies do. And it's always like... How much is it? How much is it? It's one hundred and ten dollars. And a customer it takes, takes an hour. Yeah. All right, it's one hundred and ten bucks an hour. No materials. You know, little canola oil. I mean, there's nothing. Not much. It's not like uh, you're using. Uh, it's not. It's not like you're going through uh, eighty bucks worth of uh, carbon yeah. fiber or anything like that. You know, yeah. there's no materials. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's like a hundred bucks for an hour. All right, that sounds like enough. Well, then you got to tip them thirty bucks. Yeah. Why? Well, because they don't get paid. I mean, they, they, they get the tip. They get a small hourly thing, but the, the house keeps all the money. Well, my thing is, like, that's between them and the house. Because you're paying 100 bucks for, like, 45 minutes worth of rub down. Shouldn't the house just give them 50 bucks and keep 50 and everyone be happy? No, they don't get paid. Really? This is a great scam. I got to do this, Drew. I know. I got to get some employees. I got to farm them out for 100 bucks an hour. And then say I don't pay them, so you got to pay them. And that twenty bucks you pay them, that'll be the twenty bucks they make an hour. That's right. I'll just keep the hundred. That's right. That's for the canola oil and the fresh towel. Oh, it's the overhead. And the flip flops. Yeah. That's gonna run something. All right. Yeah. You got it. I don't like it, Drew. Am I right or am I right? You're right. Uh, <laughs> that's the one thing Drew and I agree on. Mm -hmm. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred bucks an hour. Got to give a nice tip. Yes, sir, Miss Scroll. Lorenzo. You're eighteen. No, no, Lorenzo, gone. He just sounds like he's gone completely. Yeah. Let's talk to uh, Kristen, who's 22. Kristen? That's me. What's up? Oh, nothing much, guys. I just want to let you know that I've been listening to you since I was in sixth grade. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, wow. that's right. Wow. Um, anyway, <laughs> so you know what? You just keep me coming back, so you're doing a good job. Uh, Congratulations with everything. Hmm. Thank you. Why, sure. Um, anyway, my question is... Um, I'm 22, and I've never had a really serious relationship before. Hmm. And the thing is, I really don't know why. I just went to a wedding in Missouri where my cousins I haven't seen in 10 years, and, you know, they just married, and mm -hmm. it was just the strangest thing, you know? All right. What was strange? Just strange. You've never been in a serious relationship. Or you wanted to be in one? Well, you know what? I haven't been adverse to one. I'm not going to be, like, you know, you my have... wedding or anything. Well, but... you're... What does that mean? I don't know. Listen, Chris, <laughs> you're, you're a smart girl, but you're a little bit... Not, you're not, fat. No, true. <laughs> yes, fat. No, you're not. You're not angry, but you're a little bitter. Mm. I am a little bit mm. bitter, but mm. only just because I've been thinking about it recently. Okay, so you got you got a little energy. And, and so, what is the the issue? Why aren't guys? Uh... You know, I don't know. Um, I'm not. You know, ugly. <laughs> 
Yeah. But I'm not like, you know, I'm the hottest chick on the block. Uh-huh. I like when people do this. I like when they go, I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm not ugly, but I'm not the hottest woman in the universe. I like where you go. I always get suspicious when I hear that, too. Like, there's too much exaggeration uh-huh. there. All right, so, Chris, there's nothing wrong with you physically. Right. Yeah. All right, where's your dad? Oh, dad's at home. Do you I'm meet guys? Girl, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, she's too, she's too picky. Oh, you're too picky. <laughs> right. No, I'm really not. You're, you're not, not too picky. I mean, I probably had kisses in my entire life. Had what? I probably had three kisses in my entire life. Well, yeah, that, that, that means pretty you picky. might be picky. You're fat. True, please. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what it is. Only thing I can think of is that I'm an only child. All right, hold on a second. Well, she can't hear us even. <laughs> I don't know. We said you were too picky, and then she said... I'm picky. <laughs> I've only had two kisses yeah. in my whole life, and I don't know what she meant by that. Did she mean that guys didn't try to kiss her? Or... Yeah. And Drew, don't tug on your coat. You make me nervous, because equipment here is so goddamn okay. crappy. Kristen? Yeah? Okay, so Drew said you were picky, and you I'm said... Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Drew said you were picky. I'm picky? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is And you said you'd only been kissed three times. Right. That was your response to my saying you you were picky. Well, um, I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood, but um, my response meant that no one's ever tried except for three people. Really? Yeah. But okay. maybe maybe you're putting out a vibe, you know. Yeah, sort of stay keep, away. Yeah. You're smart? Yes? Yes? I'm sorry. <laughs> My phone's cutting out. I apologize. It's- All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Listen, hey, number one, number one, we got to have we gotta have good connections. This, the cell phones. Hey, if someone's on a cell phone, put cell phone on there. I don't know if you do or not, and I don't know if it says it on there, but I want to know. It could mean take them early or it could mean uh, not take them at all. But please tell everybody if they if they if they can possibly do it to get on the landline and to pick it up and all that kind of put get off the speaker and do all this. So I, I just I, I can't I can't one out of every two and a half connections is bad on this show. That's way too high an average. Shouldn't it be like one out of every three hundred calls is a horrible connection? It's every other goddamn call on this show. It can't happen that way, Lisa. Yes. Uh oh. Hmm. Connection sounds bad. Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear the hostility, though. Huh. Yeah, what's up? Hello. Hello. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Dr. Drew? Yeah, what kind of I... phone are you on? Uh, <laughs> I'm on a cell phone. Oh. You are. Yeah. I'm Ironic. sorry. That's all I have. You don't have a, a landline at your home? No, I don't. Wow. Wow. That's either, that's either means you're super cool or super loser. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with the uh, latter. The latter. Well, the former. Oh, okay. Ladder. No, the latter. Yeah. <laughs> but it'd be the former to the last say, one you I say, said. You say latter, Lisa, and she's thinking about something you step up and you know, get right. off the ground on. So it's we're latter, on, L-A-T-T-E-R. The we're, latter. We're coming undone here. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say, Adam, I like you because you tell people how it is, and you like to speak your mind. All right. Shut Whatever. up. Whatever. What's going Go. on? What's the Go. question? Okay. Um, my question is, um, I've had the last three relationships I've had. The first one was abusive. The second one was okay, I guess. The third one got a little bad, and the one I'm in now is um, just really not working all that well, I guess, because I haven't talked to him in almost a week. And um, for some reason, I'm attracted to guys who play in bands. You still there? We're yeah, yeah, we're listening. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, attracted to guys who play in bands because all my boyfriends have been in somewhat been in a band for some, you know, playing guitar or whatever. But I was also wondering why they were abandoning me if it had anything to do with my parents leaving. Yes. Or. You're you choose abandoning unavailable guys. You don't realize that's what you're choosing, but that's what you're choosing. And guys in bands are going to be unavailable because yeah. they're going to be on the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and, I, I, and the guys in, in bands are not known for monogamy. That's not sort of the image that comes to mind immediately when you think about band members. Wouldn't be a bad name for a band, though. Probably get a lot of chicks. Monogamy, yeah. 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 It's diabolical. I mean, I probably, probably have to call yourself like Monogamy UK or di- something. Di- <laughs> diabolical monogamy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Be a good name for a band. All right, so Lisa... Mm-hmm. Uh, see if you can find a guy who's not in a band. Okay, and uh, my other question was, is um, the guy I'm seeing now, he's not talking all that much. You know, he don't 
I don't know. He gets in these moods where he don't talk yeah. at all. Very and exciting and very that, attractive. Yeah. Wonder if that had anything to do with like his family. Or you know the way he is because he's a musician. You said yeah, he's. And you said you hadn't spoken to him in like a week, right? Oh, well, said, it'll be a week this Saturday. Plus, he doesn't talk. See. Okay. Let, she let, calls, but he doesn't speak. Lisa, uh, maybe this isn't the right guy for you. Okay. All right. That's all I'm gonna say. You guys aren't yeah. talking. These are sort of antisocial guys you're going for. They they're not known for stability in relationships. Yeah. Quite the contrary. And on part of part of it too is they just don't care. They're not treating you with that much respect. Guys will pull it together. You, you know what I mean? If there's a really hot chick, they'll dance. Yeah. And if the chick's just sort of around and they're sort of half into them and they're in, they're in a band and they're into other chicks too, yeah. they don't put so much effort forth. Right. Everyone, just think about the way you act when, when you meet some celebrity or some model or somebody you respect as opposed to just some uh, jack-off guy who uh, is a friend of your brother's. You know, do you stand up when they come in the room and hop up and shake their hand or anything? Or you just sit there on the sofa and nod at them. That's what this guy does with uh, Lisa. Or brew like you guys do. Yeah. That's right. I'm not going to dignify that with an answer. Alyssa? Yes. You're 24? I am 24. What's up? I just want to know why come sting when it get, come stings when it gets in your eye. Anything shot in your eye with any kind of velocity is going to hurt. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily have to be velocity. It's just that when it act, the liquid actually comes in contact with your eye, yeah, it it burns. Well, it's, it's got some salt in it, right? Drew, mm -hmm. what what burns her eye? I, I'm just I'm just salt. Well, first of all, yeah, it's the pH and the salt content, the the concentration of these various things in the eyes as opposed to. But I'm just I mean, it's not something I I know formally. You know what I mean? He never, never taken a shot? Yeah, why would there be a reason for someone to know that formally? Except I will tell you that there are STDs you can get in the eye from getting stuff in the eye. M most significantly, chlamydia, gonorrhea. And, and if it really stings and starts to discharge, that could be an STD. No, I'm just talking about casually for a few seconds. Oh, just casual coming in the eye? Okay. <laughs> like, let's just say you met a guy on the bus. Yeah, and just, you know, whips it out, smack right in the eye. Ah, it burns. No. Yeah. Well, look. Uh, look at it this way. Pee pee stings your eye too, right? right? Exactly. exactly. I've actually look never at had pee vinegar, in my everything. Your, your finger touches your eye; it stings. You know, N nothing yeah. feels good in your eye. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Except completely inert uh, things, which are balanced to you know be exactly what your eye is used to. Yeah, saline. Yeah. All right. Even visine, I guess, actually stings a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, of course. All right, there you go. You use that hey. to wash out the semen, right? <laughs> <laughs> I actually go for clear eyes, but hey. All right, there. Oh, you a hasher? <laughs> no. Yeah, you smoke a little weed, though, right? No, no laugh, no laugh. Every now and then. Now and then. No, no. Well, most of the people, uh, like, uh, that whole eye drop thing, uh, I never got into it. And then I realized a lot of stoners are into it. The visines and that stuff are really bad for your eyes. Are they? Yeah, they restrict, they constrict the blood vessels. Yeah. And that tends to restrict the oxygen supply of the cornea. It can cause all kinds of problems. Mm. Yeah, I never got into it. I just thought, uh, what if I like it? We won't one, zine? one more thing I got to carry around with me. The knowledge that you like eye drops? No, oh, I see, here, here's you, what, I'm, what I'm saying I is, see, is... use it all the time, I see. I went down this slippery slope with chapstick. Uh -uh. I, I managed to make it like 28 years without ever using chapstick, and then one day I try some chapstick, and I walk 10 feet, and I use <laughs> more chapstick, and then I walk 3 feet, and I stop, and I got to get my chapstick. And the next thing you know, it's like, hey, well, I can't leave the house. Where's my chapstick? Yeah, now, now I got to, now my face. I got. I'm, I'm giving myself a constant chapstick rub now. I become hooked on chapstick. It's my heroin. I got to chase the chapstick dragon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a bad. It's I a bad thing. I warned you before you got going down that path. Yeah. Jeez. I'd like a little heads up with the nose picking too. <laughs> yeah, but you got a problem with that. I actually hurt my nose <laughs> picking it today. <laughs> Such aggressive nose picking that I may have done damage. Scrape. To my nostril. <laughs> Cause a hole in your septum uh, or scraped off the lining. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's nice. What, were you pretty heavily into coke for many years? <laughs> no, I picked my nose when I tried. Like, Cause a hole. <laughs> I really, I really, my, I really, I, I hurt my nostril today. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I do my best thinking with my finger in my nose. Krista? Hi. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? I just have to say you guys are hysterical. Oh, good and times, man. I am man. calling from a landline. Oh, great. What's up? <laughs> Crappy landline, but one nonetheless. All right. Um, well, here's my situation. I've been single for about uh, 
a few years now. Um, my last relationship was pretty serious, but... You're fat. Keep I'm going. Mm -hmm. Nothing? Nothing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, uh... You're gay. It, it, turned, it turned bad, so, uh... At any rate, I met this new guy, and we've been seeing each other for a while, and, um... There's a lot of sexual tension between the two of us. We both really want to have sex with each other, but we want to take things slow, and we don't want to have a lot of partners in our lives, um, sexual partners. And so I don't really know where to go from here. I mean... Third base. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. I, you, how long have you been dating him? Um, a few months. And she, does, she doesn't want to rack up any kind of sexual numbers, except for she's with a guy she's really into. Did you had you had it gone through a period where you were promiscuous? Um, yeah. Okay, so so you go through a thing where you're with lots of guys, and now that you have a real relationship, no sex. Got to punish him. Got to got to punish him. Got to withhold Look, the sex. Let's just free Chris up. You're, there's nothing wrong with you. This there guy's a good be. guy. There might be something wrong with there. No, <laughs> you're fine. You're into the guy. He's into you, right? Yeah, it seems that way. Like, I met him online, and oop, oop. the first time um, we met, I really didn't expect him to call me back, and he did. And he told me that I looked great, and that things were, like, really nice and really sweet, and he wanted to get together again. And so he's coming over um, tomorrow. <coughs> Where's Where does he live? How far from you? Uh, about two hours. All right. So we only see each other maybe once a week. Okay. Over a few months. Yeah. He's coming over tomorrow to stay for the weekend or something? Um, no, he, he usually went, he went because he lives, he lives out in Long Beach, and I live in Van Nuys. No, oh, um, two hours? That's four, 25 minutes away. No, not really. It's, it's far. Okay, listen. San Diego is it's how, two hours. Is how <laughs> far past Long Beach. Yeah. San Diego is two hours from Van Nuys. Okay? Right. All right, Long Beach is an hour. You're okay. fast. 40 minutes. Okay. It's not that far. Okay. I'd drive it if there there was some oral at the end of the highway. <laughs> okay. Look, here's the thing. You like the guy. Uh-huh. He likes you. Uh-huh. Feel free to proceed cautiously with the relationship. I'm worried there's some sexual compulsion here because she goes through this phase of intense activity and then becomes depriving. Uh, anything yes. happen? You ever get raped or sexually abused or anything like that? Um, yeah. When I was, when I was Told younger, you, um, Told I was you, Adam. molested by my therapist. Oh, my God. God, how old were you? Um, I was about seven. Wow. Oh, my God. And, um, he was my, um, I, my mom beat me when I was little. Oh, my God. So your I therapist went, molested you? Therapy, yeah. Now your therapist had sex with you? No, he would just touch me. Oh, hey, I'm a rapist. Like, Drew, please. <laughs> but then when I was, um, about... A year ago, I, that's was, the right. I was involved with a date rape. Yeah. I got and that, drunk and, that's, and passed out, and he raped me. And, and that's and, where she shut down. Uh, okay, but how old were you when the therapist did this? Seven. I was about seven, maybe six. And he would, he would just sort of fondle you? Yeah, and I, t I told my mom that he would put his arm around me, and it felt really uncomfortable. And so I saw him for about a year, and um, and then I was just like, I, I can't do it anymore. And so I just, I totally rebelled. And um, my parents got me a new therapist, a female therapist, who I saw all the way up until um, the age of 16, 17. Did you report to her what had happened with the other one? No. Why were you seeing a therapist at age six? Because my mom was um, uh, abusing me. Okay. All right. All right. Not sexually. Just sexually. Is it possible you were misinterpreting some of the things this guy was doing? Because since uh, you had been abused, maybe everything felt like an intrusion? Um, no, because he he would put his hand on my pants. All right. so. I can't misinterpret that. No, not really. Well, there's certain more aggressive forms of experimental therapy. No. I'm going to perform some of that on myself when is, I get did home you, today. And you never told the second therapist what this guy had done? No, um, I never really told my parents either. Do you want to maybe go after this guy? Uh, Do the public a, a favor? I don't even remember what his name was. Oh, Right. It's, All right, but Krista, you're going through this. Let's, let's focus on you for a second. You're going through this thing of, of sexual compulsion, and that, that's what happens. You, you go through this flurry of activity, and then you get deprived, and you start withholding. And all of it is a way of sort of avoiding real intimacy. And now you're with a guy that you could be intimate with, and, of course, now no sex. All right. So you, you kind of move forward. Uh, maybe, a bit. maybe find a new therapist. Yeah. I wouldn't say I don't, I don't count myself as raped by a therapist, but... Uh, I have uh, canceled uh, without uh, 24 hours notice and Got been charged, charged a 90 yeah. bucks. Yeah. And uh, I consider that a form of rape light. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a mild raping. But this raping you deserved. No. 
I, I don't I don't I don't like that twenty four hours BS. You should be able to do it in like twenty minutes. I don't like the speed limits. All right. Karen? Karen. It's funny, I now I now know people have dropped off the line when I don't hear static when we punched them up. Karen couldn't have fallen asleep. She's been on hold for five minutes. Yeah, I know. Karen? All right. Let's talk to Ricky. Ricky? Yeah. You're 22? Yeah, sure am. You did speed for, uh, well, Drew moved Sorry. the screen as I was reading it. Uh, actually, I'm uh, 1,200 weeks old. Ah, you did, uh. the, you did the math. Yeah, yeah, I had to do it out for you, man. All right, so uh, you have a speed-related question? Yeah, actually, the thing is, uh, before I start, I just want to say uh, about the little quote that you had about uh, the waiters and stuff and the, and the tip. Mm -hmm. Take some damn typing classes. Don't put the, your financial problems on my tab. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right on, brother. So, uh, uh, so he gets so a, about, a Diablo sandwich, uh, Mr. Pib, and a... Uh, Let's actually order the uh, Mr. Pib Mountain Dew suicide and some chili fries, and this guy <laughs> wants 80 cents. Kiss my black ass. There you go. Hell yeah. Yeah, take them time, damn typing classes, huh? That's but right. Uh, take uh, them uh, typing uh, classes. Or something, huh? Uh, well, my question was uh, to Dr. Drew. The thing was, I started messing around with the speed thing about, I'll say about, about a year now. Yeah. Last summer, actually, it was. And I just started out doing it here and there type deal, so... I could perform a little bit longer in my when I'm having sex with my old lady. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just double listen to music for a second. So you began using speed to prolong your performance in bed? Yeah, exactly. Speed was going to do that for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just, can't, can't orgasm. Can't have an orgasm. All right. Yeah, exactly. You know, there are safer ways to do that if, it, if you're going to take pharmacological approaches. But, but, yeah, I hear you, but uh, thing, you know, I, I tried it out, and then when, when I started doing, uh, having sex, I, I realized that, shit, I'm lasting longer, because of what I, what I smoked right before I came over here, you know what I mean? Smoke so, speed? Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. All right. He's calling from Bakersfield. It's probably the mayor of Bakersfield. Yeah, he's not know, tipping. He's only smoking speed. He's not shooting it. Yeah, Isn't that how it works in Bakersfield? Like, if if you live in Bakersfield and you mainline speed, you're, 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 you're in the cabinet, you're in the mayor's cabinet, but you don't actually get to be the mayor. The guys who smoke the speed, now they're up for election. Mm. There right. is there. All so right. what is your question? And I'm just saying, like, uh, like last few months, it, like my time of having sex has dropped down back to regular. Down so, to regular. Okay, yeah, like, and you're still smoking the speed. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, you're going to have to stop smoking the speed, Ricky. Uh, yeah. it, it damages your brain, okay, speed? Not great. Up. His line is perfect, but he, you can't understand a word he's saying. Yeah, the static's coming from his Finally, we have a perfect central line. nervous system. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it causes destruction of the limbic system. Yeah. Memory problems ensue. It's uh, tons of problems with this drug. It's an awful drug and profoundly addictive. Even though it seems like it's kind of no big deal, just smoking it three times a week, something like that. It is perfect. When you start thinking, what? Can I ask him? No. Ask him what? Uh, Ricky. Yeah. Do you think that people are thinking about you and talking about you? Do you get those kinds of thoughts once in a while? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm, I'm All right, you will. Sure. You will. Uh, always you right. will. You always bat a thousand. We will. Okay, we got to take a break. I got to uh, Matt real fast. Matt. Yeah. Your waiter. I'm actually a waiter bartender. And uh, you say I'm wrong that uh, that uh, your your employers do pay you. Well, the federal law says that tipped employees can have a minimum wage of between 213 and 225 an hour. I think it just went up. But 225 an hour maximum. Oh, I Plus, see. Because of workmen's compensation laws and uh, unemployment insurance, almost all wait staff are part time. We only work between four and five hours, three or four shifts per week. Right. So we're expected to make as much as a normal person would in a 40 hour work week. This is the argument that the commercial actors use that you like so much. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's like when those uh, ferries were on strike a few years ago, the uh, SAG or AFTRA or whatever other crappy union I was forced to, forced, forced to join if you want to work in this business. People are like, how can you sell out your own union? It's like, uh, listen, how, how, uh, how could uh, someone sell out Stalin, who was living in the Soviet Union at the time? It's like, no, you were, you were forced to join this group. Okay, but here's, here's the whole, yes, this point is, is, these uh, these uh, pussies like Tim Robbins are up there going, well, uh, these actors, they only work once or twice a year. They have families to support. 
Oh, I see. So they they choose to show up to work twice a year. So they got to make their nuts. So you got to pay them fifty grand a day. Is that it? To stand in the background and uh, dance on a jeep that's parked in the sand for a KFC commercial? You could get any monkey to do this. They got to make enough to support their family for a year. No, that's not how it works. They got to get a job. And it's the same with you uh, lazy waiters. We got to make what hey, you guys. You guys, you're lucky. You get to work a fifty hour week. <laughs> we have to make what you make in ten hours. Oh really? Boy, I didn't know how cursed your life was. So instead of making, instead of making ten bucks an hour, you got to make fifty an hour. Yeah. And his his uh, now how is he how is he rebutting my comment? He's not. He actually was making. They're not it even worse. making minimum he, wage. He was making it worse, actually. You guys get two dollars an hour, right? That's right. And All right. You're, who pays you the two dollars an hour? Well, basically, what my point was. Is most of us are working night times. This is the only job we can get to put ourselves through school. Oh, who cares? So, until again, you know, yeah, who cares? All your congressmen. Uh, listen, the here's your, your, your whole pay. point is is we got other stuff to do other than work. Beat so we need more. to get paid a ton. Beat them up more when we come back. All right, we got to take a break. I, do you understand this argument, everybody? The argument is is listen, I'm going out on auditions during the day. I'm doing some modeling gigs. I'm, uh, I'm going out for this. I'm doing that. I go to school. I only work a few hours at night. Hey, i got to pay the bills. So I'm going to need a couple hundred dollars cash every night. That's great. That's well, the great. other thing is he's making the point that we're making is the employer should be, whatever it is, the employer should be picking it up. Employers don't even pay these guys minimum wage. Yeah. Pay them $2 an hour. The F is that. And we'll be back. Buddy, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right. We got to get out of here with Matt. Hey, Matt. I'm here. Your waiter. Yes, sir. All right. We're done with you. Okay. I know your point was, um, I don't know what your point was. <laughs> My point is, is, is employers should pay their waiters, not me. I agree 100%. And my point was that until the laws are changed, call your congressman. Complain to the people that own the restaurants. But the person who's hurt when you leave the table with a short tip is the waiter. Right. So, so do, you, do you think that the basic uh, sort of hourly wage for a waiter could be controlled through legislation or improved through legislation? The minimum wage for everybody else is, yes, and it's the law that the minimum wage for tips. Yeah, but let's say, let's say the minimum wage for a waiter is 15 bucks an hour. We don't have to tip anymore? No. Good. I would that. gladly work for $7 an hour if I could get an eight-hour shift working at night. I would work eight hours a day, five days a week working at night so I could really? put myself through school. But you how got... many night jobs are there out there? You can work at a gas station. Hold on. Where are we now, Drew? Night. But where are we? Los Angeles. I know where we're at work, jackass. Yes, yes. Night. <laughs> Drew, no, no. I, I, Frankenstein? <laughs> I'm trying to get at what you were getting. I want you working at night. Uh, I got the night part. I've been working. Oh, Jesus. I think I've, you know, remember I, I tell you I lost my groove? Yeah. You got it back? I think I'm winning it back a little. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, no, hey. No, no, it's not bad. TJ? It's not good. Yes. <laughs> well, it's never good. TJ, you're 26. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. I'm a really big fan of the show. Great. I just want to let you know that I every time I drive home from work, I listen to you guys. You guys are hilarious. Thanks, TJ. Anyways, I, I heard you guys talking about... Um, semen in the eye. The, yeah, the semen in the eye and why it stings. And, um, I'm a former student at UC Berkeley, and I think I know why. All right. Um, there's an enzyme that I learned that's on the top of the sperm, which helps it go into the... No, 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 no. That, w no, that, yeah, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't, that's, that's for capacitance so the, the sperm can penetrate the egg. Well, so what's that's that activated. It's, it's, it's how the egg is penetrated. How by it burrows sperm. into the yeah, egg? Yeah, yeah. But no, that's an, that enzyme is activated and, and as it, it hits Well, the maybe it thinks the eyeball's the egg instead of burrow in. <laughs> hey, it's an interesting hypothesis, TJ. Yeah, yeah, it's just an enzyme that breaks down protein, so I just thought, I thought maybe it might be doing the same thing. That's why it might sting. All right, appreciate that. I don't, I don't know. So, Drew, yeah, sperm has a is coated with uh, like sperm, something. Sperm is the head of the sperm has all kinds of specialized function that get it to find the egg, right? Get to it, beat all the other sperm out, and then penetrate, and then get through, and then get in. There's multiple steps to that. How do you, when do you mean get through and get in? Well, the egg is the egg is a big. There's a big shell around it. Has to be able to penetrate that. Really? Yeah. A shell? Basically, yeah. I mean, it's not calcium shell, it's but it's got to get a, to the nougaty center. That's right. 
Wow. And it has all kinds of specialized biological functions to get it through. And there's several impairments that it can regret. Some of the reasons people have fertility problems, that the sperm doesn't capacitate normally. And Why does the egg need to protect itself so much? It wants healthy sperm? Yeah, it wants the it's sperm. It's got to put a little battle so only right. the strong can get through exactly. there? Exactly. Boy. It's, uh, only and also the sperm fight it out with one another. Find, you know, only one gets through. I wonder which one of my sperm won. I think the weak one won. It was, I think it was one of those situations you see once in a while, like in a tough man competition, where the tough guy actually loses on a sneak punch. That, that correct? That caused you? I don't feel like I'm the number one sperm. Yeah, that, but think of the other Corolla sperm. Oh. See what I'm saying? I mean, just think about the Corolla sperm. I know. They're, they're all just, they all had, uh, you know, I know my coats, family's, coats with my, my elbow family's, pads on them. I, they were smoking, you know, pipes. <laughs> and, the, and your sperm was the one had a tool bag around its belt and was doing yeah. some business. Yeah. So, I mean, my family is really borderline retarded. I mean, if you're, you know, my dad, I was talking to my dad the other day, and I said, uh, I was telling him all about this. Uh, he said, uh, I heard you did that car race. And I said, yes, I did that uh, Toyota Grand Prix race a few weeks back. And he said, hmm. And I said, yeah, it was exciting because... Uh, all the cars, you know, they had the roll bars, the cage, the fire suppression. They were all tuned up, but they were all equally prepared. All So it made for exciting racing. And he said, did you drive your car? I said, no, Dad. Once again. Dad, once again. Yeah. I, I was driving the 350Z, and I had a good advantage on that Josh Brolin because he had a Suburban. <laughs> Kids, child seats in there, rolling around in the back. I think he may have had his kids and a load of groceries in the back. So I was able to pull him on the straights. But, of course, you know, he has a 6,000-pound vehicle. So he was able to, you know, push me around in the curves just a little bit. Buzz Aldrin was, uh, Buzz was driving module. a golf cart. L lunar module. Yeah, I was driving a lunar module. Uh, Peekaboo Street. She was, uh, she was driving skis. S skis. skis, rocket skis. We all had our own form of transportation out there trading paint. Yeah, they went ahead and put a uh, fire bottle in my car, Dad. That's just it. Harness, net, and everything. <laughs> you understand my family is may, may be retarded. I know. Okay. From your mouth. All right. To God's ears. Jen? This is Jen. That's right, Jen. No, with an A. Jen, uh-oh. We better improve that attitude, Jen. Damn, <laughs> pow! All right. Drew saw where my finger was. <laughs> I grabbed it before it hit the hold button, so let's What's go. What's up? Okay. Um, I met this guy when I was 25. He told me he had herpes. I was okay with it. I researched it. We fell in love, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Ten months later, we broke up. We didn't talk for about six months. We started talking again. Then we started sleeping together again, and all of a sudden he decided to move. A week before he moved, he had an outbreak due to stress. And I ended up getting herpes. You had sex with him while he was having an outbreak? Well, he didn't know. I see. He didn't, because he was under so much stress, he was on a cyclovarin, and so he didn't know well, that what, he was what? He had an outbreak in spite of being on Zovarax? No. I mean, he, do, he does take it all the time, but apparently he had one, and he was unaware. He of had an outbreak. outbreak in spite of being on Zovarax? No. He didn't have an outbreak? He did. He had an outbreak in spite of being on a cyclovir? Right. How many times did I have to say that before she answered my question? <sighs> no. Yeah, no. 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 Ah, screw you. I'm tired of Jan. Jan. Such corrects me ten times right out of the box and then said arguing with Drew. What Drew's saying is is he was on suppression therapy, right? For the, for the virus, yes. Some, for the some people take that stuff all the time. If they feel an outbreak coming on or they're having an outbreak, and other people who have a bad case of it take it constantly. Yeah. I've seen the commercials. They're kickboxing. Yeah. They're having a good time. Uh-huh. All right. I don't know what Jen's question was. Do you? Up on the board, it says something about having a relationship. How does she get a relationship, even though she has herpes now? So you're not with this guy anymore? Correct. Okay. And now you want to have a relationship. Right. That's fine. Same way he was able to have one. Yeah. But I actually have dated a couple of people, and as soon as I was really honest with them and said, well, I have this, they pretty much gave me some bullshit. Oh, please. I, Jan is angry. Oh, yeah. Jan's like a world-class coos. 
And the reason the guys are dropping her is because she's a bitch. Not because of the herpes. If a guy was really into her, they, he, would, he would deal with it. Just the way she dealt with it with her boyfriend. Listen, pe people really into you, they'll date you if you got HIV. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. All right. Jan. Yes. You're pain in the ass. That's why they drop you. It's not because of the herpes. Actually, I'm not. I'm kind of bitter now because of the fact because it was recently that... No, you've been bitter for a long time. No, I've been depressed for a long time. Okay, well, well your, 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 de your depression comes across yeah, as anger. That irritability and, and stuff and hostility from the depression, you right. get, you, you're projecting that. So okay. look, look into all that stuff. And then uh, don't worry about the dating right now. Focus on the depression. Get yourself in a little better place. And it'll be fine. Find a guy who's into you. He's into you. Just the way you herpes dealt with, and all. Yeah, you dealt with this guy's herpes. Somebody will deal with yours. It's not that big a deal. All right. Okay. Hey, good time, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna not gonna satisfy you with a laugh, even Adam. How nah. dare you? Now, what is going on that we just talked to Jan, who uh, up on the screen it said Jen, and that's why we uh, mispronounced mm -hmm. it. And now we have someone else named Jen. How many Jens do we talk to a year on this show? Look how many mics are on the screen. Three mics and yeah. a Jen. Full house. <laughs> hey, Jen. Hello. You're 19. Yes, I'm 19. Oh, I like you so much better than the evil Jen. Oh. Jan. Evil Jan. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. What's up? Um, okay. Whatever. Me and my roommates were kind of curious about if marijuana affects... Um, or if, if after you smoke marijuana for, like, a long period of time and then you go to quit, if it can cause, like, insomnia or sleeplessness? Yeah, there's a, there's a whole withdrawal syndrome associated with pot. And okay. insomnia is a big part of it. Irritability, moodiness, a lot of depression. Uh -huh. Suicidal ideation well above and beyond the degree of depression. In other Whoa. words, you may not feel that depressed, but you'll, step, you'll just start preoccupying about killing yourself. That's a, a strange kind of side effect this drug causes and then a lot of craving and a lot of irritability anything you anything you stop screws with your sleep right well it, when you've been sleeping, Usually. It's, it's a downer and, yeah. you, and then your brain sort of compensates for that and then when you remove it it's all those counter regulatory yeah that's mechanisms why, kick are there that's why you can't quit <laughs> okay so even if even if you have like no you know previous signs of depression or whatever it can still cause that stopping you you if you smoke pot long enough it will make you depressed in essentially 100 percent of cases but okay. if, if it but if even if you don't have the depression and you stop abruptly you can right. get to, you can get depressive symptoms then right okay. you need you need to be sort of followed if you're if you're a marijuana addict it's an, it's it's a very pernicious drug all right but good times good times oh yeah <laughs> thanks guys yeah see there you go there's a nice one she's one of our nice scholars yeah take a quick break we'll be right back Yeah, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Drew. Who is this band? Good Charlotte. Good Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Where are those guys been? We haven't seen them yeah. in a while. It's a good song. Yeah. Coming in two weeks? Are they? Yes, oh, they is. All right, let's talk to uh, Mike. Mike, you're 24. What's up? Hi, guys. Hey. Long time. Listener, I've been debating whether I should call you guys and talk to you for a long time. You made the right choice, my friend. <laughs> you took the important step and called the program. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty scared. Um, this is a question for Brock and Drew. Well, you got uh, both of us. So what's up? Well, and uh, I'm just going through a really bad breakup mm -hmm. right now, which normally I can handle and it's okay. But You pansy! Yeah, I know. And? We need those after, guys back too, After this breakup... A lot of other things happen. I mean, like I said, like a whole house crashed down on me. Going through a cancer scare, found out my grandmother has Alzheimer's, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed that I start to go in these major mood swings that are totally, totally different. My rationality, my thinking, everything. You may tell me what happens. Huh? What happens? Well, it, it doesn't happen when, when I'm with anybody. It's always when I'm alone and I start thinking about things. But one of them is this very, very self-destructive. I mean... I'll be driving home from work, and I'll get in one of these moods, and I'll start driving 120 miles an hour down mm -hmm. the freeway, just mm -hmm. trying to see how fast I can take the turns, mm -hmm. how close I can t make, you know, cuts in between cars. Okay. So I Drew drives out. every night when we yeah. leave this I'm place. I'm not trying to hurt myself, though. Oh, but, I, I mean, I, I mean, I go out walking late at nights in bad neighborhoods, or I go to the movies or something alone, and I know the only reason I'm there is to pick a fight. Yeah. I know that I'm looking... I mean, I'm not physically going out and starting anything, but I'm waiting for an excuse. All right, so what's the question? What's the question? Well, I just, 
I don't know. I had a friend who who talked to me about this. I told him to find about and how different they all were, and my thinking is totally, completely different than all of them. And well, this, wanted, frankly, this addicts think like this. I know. See, that's the thing. Is I mean, I've never, I've never touched drugs. I've never touched anything. All right. Whatsoever. Well, all right. Let's uh, just uh, all right. calm down for a second here, Buckaroo. Your girlfriend dumped you how long ago? Uh, it's about a month and a half ago. Yeah. All right. It's six weeks. You have right to be upset. How, so. how long were you guys together? Eight months. But the thing yeah. is, we had a really amazing relationship. And All right. Now, listen, we don't, we don't quiet down. We don't need to hear any more. Well, this well, is... Actually, I think if I can explain, it might explain a little bit more why I'm going so nuts. All right. She's the greatest thing ever. You don't understand. We had a spiritual well, connection. It was, a, it was She's the perfect one. Oh, shut up, yeah, Drew. I know, Go I know. ahead. Honestly, no, but no we, had a lot, we had some flaws and things like that, too. But, I mean, I can handle that. She broke up. I mean, she just walks in and goes, I don't love you anymore, walks out, even though two days before she told me how amazing we were and everything. But, yeah, yeah. you know, I can handle that. But she keeps going back and forth telling me she needs me, she wants to be with me, da-da-da, yeah. over and over again. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, within one month, every feeling that she had for me, we're supposed to be in love and finding marriage, dried up and completely goes, now she's engaged to be married to some other guy. To be married. Okay, she but said, listen, le she Mike, she's Mike, not, Mike she's listen, listen to me. A yeah. couple things. First off, you added nothing with that uh, diatribe. I know these things. Yeah, well, in fact, you had, you've taken away from the possibility that this relationship had any reality to it, any that, real substance. Believe it or not, that's the best thing that could have happened. Yes, absolutely. She is a nutty girl. You are nutty when you're around her, and nutty people make you feel nutty, and they actually do turn you nutty temporarily. Yes. yes. You're a guy who's not nutty, who's been turned a little inside out by a screwy, chaotic broad. She is going to get married, and she will make this other guy nutty, believe you me. Or he'll abuse her. Yes, and One somebody, if someone both. knows what uh, Believe You Me comes from and who the a-hole who invented that horrible <laughs> saying was, uh, please call the shot like a punch him in the nuts, Believe You Me. She's doing you a favor, Believe You Me, okay? Now, it's painful, it's horrible, you're 24, this is exactly how you're supposed to feel when you've been uh, put with. through the spin yeah. cycle yeah. at age 24. The Man, you got energy, you got adrenaline, you have anger. Uh, it's just how you're managing the depression. It's with thrill and, right. and depression. Right. This, this is all fine. The the point is, is you have to make it through the next couple of tough months without doing any permanent damage, and that includes physically to yourself, to anybody else, or ending up in jail, yeah. or getting hooked on heroin. We haven't given this speech in a while, Drew. Mm. I'm going to give it now. All right, ready. Believe you me, Drew, when <laughs> I say... <laughs> um, when you get really screwed over in life, I mean, when you get dumped on, male or female, but especially males, because males young are males. more... Yeah, young males are more proactive. Energetic. They're aggressive. Energetic, They'll yeah. do something about yeah. it. Women yeah. sit home, double down on the hog and doss, yeah. and uh, finger bang herself until her hand falls off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's true, Drew. I've right. seen the after-school specials. <laughs> okay. Guys will go out, they will pick fights, they will take their car and they'll drive 150 miles an hour until, uh, until a tire blows out, they're going to fight with a cop or a yeah. crip or whoever. Right. Right. You are not going to be happy during that six-month period after somebody dumps you no matter and, what. and destroys you. Yeah. You're not going to be happy. Yeah. Here's your goals. Not Do, kill don't lose a limb. Yeah. Don't kill yourself. Don't end up in jail for ma vehicular manslaughter. Right. Try not to pick up a couple of DUIs. Don't get AIDS from going to prostitutes. Don't take a swing at your uh, pops and put them in the hospital. Don't get in a fist fight with your best friend. Don't, yeah, don't get strung out don't on, take heroin. on heroin. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't. You don't, there's nothing to do. Just don't, don't do any permanent damage. Make it through that six months unscathed, and, and also, so, and, and don't drop out of high, you know, yeah. don't drop out of college, don't quit your job, and don't get into thinking, I gotta find another girl right now, I gotta go out and be with somebody else. She was the greatest thing. Nobody will have me. No one is gonna be as great as her because that's just screwed up thinking. You that just, will all that thinking will pass. You have to just sort of push through the next six months, and mm -hmm. that means regiment. Sorry structure, to say, structure. get up in the morning, walk, take. Yeah, you're 20. Exercise, jog. yeah, exercise. You run five miles, take yeah. a shower before you go to work yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Just keep stuff in front of you and keep stuff moving. And don't get yourself baited into those horrible ideas like, I'm just going to go park the El Camino out front of her apartment and sit yeah. here and drink beer for a while. I'm not going well. in. <laughs> Believe me, you'll be going in after that eighth Mickey's or, Big Mouth. by the same token, don't convince yourself you need to go move to Alaska. 
right. to uh, start again. Yeah, don't join the service. Yeah. Well, uh, eh, go ahead, no, I join the service. Yeah. Don't do anything rash, as they, as they Service say. Service might be a good solution. That's not bad. Get on your knees, scumbag! Yeah, but then you're over in six months, and now you got three and a half years of uh, yeah. Uncle Sam to yeah, deal with. Point. All right, that's what you need to do. Whole lot of nothing. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the show. God bless you, Drew. God bless you, Adam. Thanks, Prada. <laughs> Okay. We're going to take a uh, extended break. I'm going to uh, fire up the cell phone, Drew, so we can have a nice conversation on the way home Excellent. about uh, whatever it is we didn't talk about uh, in, in the commercial break. <laughs> so, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. When you're beating off. <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.